Well, in unincorporated Cook County, you may be able to have 9.9 .9 grams of weed without being prosecuted. Just like a speeding ticket, a $200 fine gets you home safely with your cush. The Cook County Board and Commissioner Erlene Collins have come up with a creative way of keeping people out of jail. Measure carefully and get a good triple beam scale because anything 10 grams or less is just a slap on the wrist. Call me at 630-575-TALK. What do you feel about weed being kind of legal in Cook County? Next on Gerard McClendon Live. Should we arrest you on a misdemeanor charge or just give you a $200 ticket for having 10, 15, or 20 joints? President Stroger told WGN AM 720 host Greg Jarrett that decriminalizing was not, quote, such a great idea, end quote. Mayor Daley said that the issue was, quote, really clouded, end quote. But wouldn't this create another stream of revenue as well as reducing stress on courts and freeing up jail space? Will unincorporated Cook County be the next Amsterdam? Call me at 630-575-TALK. Joining us now from the Tribune Tower is the commissioner who has all of Chicago land talking. Welcome, Commissioner Erlene Collins. How are you this evening? I'm fine, and you? Pretty good, pretty good. First, Commissioner, let's start with the premise. Legislation can be influenced by a lawmaker's personal situation. Give my audience your personal reason and how placing a fine on marijuana can have benefits. Um, it's, it's more than just placing a fine on marijuana. But first, let me set the record straight. Mm -hmm. This uh, uh, ordinance grew out of a conference sponsored at Roosevelt University back in June. It had nothing to do with the statement that I did talk to one of the, the reporters in reference to seven, more than seven years ago, uh, what happened to impoundment of my grandson's car uh, for one half a joint of uh, mar uh, marijuana and four youth when they were in high school. Okay. Um, we were looking at this uh, from around, around the country and believe it or not, we don't have the resources to chase down and that's what a lot of things are, are happening, filling up our juvenile detention center in our jails. And the laws are currently indiscriminately enforced. Yeah. And if you, if you go to the juvenile detention center, you will see it is about 80% 5% African Americans and Latinos because mm. there there's discretion in enforcing the existing state laws. Now let me make it very clear. This came out of the initiative that was co-sponsored by uh, the Illinois um, Consortium for Drug Policy, mm -hmm. uh, Protestants for uh, the Common Good, right. and other groups uh, participated. And we already have this law, law on the books where we drafted this law. They brought it to the conference. Our ordinance is based after the Chicago Hikes. Chicago Hikes already have this law in effect. Okay, so and, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. And uh, 13 other states have done the same thing. Okay, so, so is the reason for this, Commissioner Collins, is this for the individual staying out of jail? Is this for revenue? Is this to free up courts? What's the it's reason a combination, for this? It's a combination of all of those rolled into one. But it's a narcotic. This is a controlled stu substance, Commissioner. You know, are you saying that so, if a person... So, so, so was alcohol at some point in time alcohol, and, 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 and cigarettes, which is far more harmful to the body. You are absolutely then, right. Okay, you so, are absolutely right, Commissioner, but <laughs> alcohol and, and cigarettes are legal. Well, well listen, we're, we're, listen talking, to, we're, we're talking about a substance that's, that's a controlled <laughs> substance, it's a narcotic. If I've got 12 grams, I'm going to jail. But you're saying that if I've got eight grams, I could just get a $200 ticket, like a speeding ticket? If you get, if you got 12 grams and you are black, mm. you will probably, nine out of 10, will go to jail. Woo. If you got 12, 13, 30 grams, if you are white, <laughs> 
the, the odds are nine out of ten will not go to jail. So commissioner, and, come and on, commissioner. Is, so it's racial, commissioner. Come on now. Come, it, no, it's real. If yeah. you if you later segments of the show, when you see uh, the, the people from Roosevelt University, then there have been studies across this country. That's when you go to jail. Come with me. I will take you to the juvenile detention center. I will take you to the county jail, and I will take you to the state prison. Mm -hmm. This is the gateway because yeah. most of the diversion program, which I I sponsor in Cook County on the ordinance, we have a pilot program for jail diversion. Mm -hmm. And and we find that because three times, if you get on the third time, this becomes a felony. Yeah. The, right now, we have not changed state laws. And let me first put that to rest. Okay. If, if a policeman feel that, that they want to use the state law and, and charge this person if they are aggravated and doing something wrong or criminal or whatever, they can still charge you under the, under the state law. The Absolutely. state's attorney drafted this ordinance, made sure we did not conflict with the, with the state law. We are not in conflict. We did not take away anything from the existing law. Well, let me ask what you, we Commissioner. Added, if you want to look at it, we actually made it a stiffer penalty because now Dude. if you have 10 grams or less, basically they would either walk away or discretionary, they would they don't give you anything. Let me ask you this. Do you believe in decriminalizing marijuana? Do you believe it no, should be... No, the absolutely it not. Should, it should be legal? You don't, don't think so? I do not believe in totally decriminalizing marijuana okay, okay. at any, any length. But okay. I do believe that we should not be chasing those little amounts, which is a misdemeanor. Most of them get thrown out by mm -hmm. the courts anyway after they get it. But they end up with a record. Even yeah. though you go through and you get arrested, you go to court, you end up with the record. You know, and because, you know, because driving while black and, and is a reality. But you also should drive while black without a bag of weed under the seat of your car. Commissioner, I agree commission, with you. absolutely. Mm. So, what, regardless of what color you are, you have to abide by the rules. Commissioner, do you think that President Todd Strozier will veto I this? I don't know what President Todd Strozier will or will not do. I, I'm, I'm asking you, that, what, what do you think he'll do? Will he veto think, it? Or? I don't think anything about what Todd Strozier would do. I don't think Todd know what he will do himself. Woo! Commissioner Early Collins, I appreciate you coming on the show and explaining the whole situation for us. Thank you for being on Gerard McClendon Live. You take care now. Up in smoke or down in flames? Should marijuana be decriminalized in Cook County? Commissioner Erlene Collins and Reverend Alexander Sharp, uh, they kind of think so. 10 grams or less, call me, 630-575-TALK. I wish someone would look at it pretty seriously before they, they go ahead with this because there are options for people to get probation. They can be wiped off their record if they're small amounts of marijuana already on the books now. That's Sheriff Tom. Dart, of course, he figured out the Craigslist. He took them down with the prostitution situation. He's figuring out the Burr Oak situation, and now he's discussing the probable, possible decriminalization of marijuana in unincorporated Cook County. Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. We're discussing the partial decriminalization of marijuana. Aren't alcohol and cigarettes worse than weed? Where do you stand? 630-575-TALK. Joining us now is the Executive Director for Protestants for the Common Good, Reverend Alexander Sharp. Thanks for being on the show, Reverend Sharp. How's everything? Doing well, thank you. Good, good. You know, Reverend, are you an advocate for people possessing and using controlled substances? I mean, make this clear for my audience. Yeah, of course not. We're not encouraging the use of marijuana. We are saying that if uh, you do possess a, a low level amount that your life shouldn't be uh, at best put on hold and perhaps even destroyed because you have a misdemeanor on your record. You should receive a fine uh, and have the chance to uh, change your habits uh, if that's what you're going to do. Reverend Sharp, talk to me. How can Protestants for the common good support this, though? I mean, you know, come on, aren't we in a WWJD how, how are, how situation? Are you, how are you serving the common good if you spend enormous resources in our society at a time when none of us have enough money to do the most essential things at the city, the state, and the county level uh, in, the, in the climate that we're now in, or in most climates, uh, to, infor uh, to put forward a law uh, which puts people uh, with something on their record which can make 
make them more unemployed, makes it hard for them to get a job, uh, makes it hard to move forward in any aspect of their life. Uh, when you talk about uh, compassionate and humane law, you talk about law that serves the needs of individuals and serves the needs of society. You're not doing either one when you put something on a record uh, uh, that uh, really serves no useful purpose uh, and costs money to uh, enforce when we simply yeah. don't have that money. So, Reverend, we're better off by you know, with 10 grams or less, we're better off by saying, okay, hey, don't arrest. The $200 fine, of course, that can go into the coffers mm -hmm. of Cook County. We're also keeping courts not tied up. We're saving jail space for more serious activity, more serious criminal activity. And we're looking as Commissioner Erlene Collins so eloquently stated, we're looking at people not being marred for something as simple as marijuana. Is that what you're saying? You summarized the case, summarized the case better than I could. That's yeah. terrific. You know what, let me go to Facebook. R right here, I'm looking at Andrea Coster's comment, Reverend. She says, the jails are overcrowded as it is. Let's not waste the space or the state's money on prosecuting such a small offense. So you gotta make this clear for me. Where do we draw the line? I mean, is the 10 gram is, the, is that a good enough threshold? Should it be a little higher? Should it be a little lower? What's your stance there? I'm not going to make those fine distinctions when the major thing is to establish uh, what has been established in this law, that you should not uh, criminalize uh, something that is really uh, a matter that can be dealt with either through uh, treatment or other means. Uh, I would also say we're not, as I did earlier, we're not for the use of marijuana, but we are saying that if you're going to change uh, society and you're going to change individual behavior, you do it through education, uh, just as has been the case in uh, uh, other areas in uh, alcohol abuse and in smoking. Habits have changed enormously, not because we prohibited either one of those drugs, which they are, but because we've educated the public. Putting people in jail or even putting a criminal offense on their record is not the answer. And yeah. especially given the lack of resources to do that and the, and the way in which we need resources for other things. Yeah, that's well stated. You know, let me ask you this. When it comes to alcohol and cigarettes. Reverend Alexander Sharp, please tell me, should those two items be banned? Should they be illegal? We tried that in Prohibition, as, as everyone in your audience well knows. What we found is that there might be an increase in uh, uh, drinking when uh, uh, in the absence of Prohibition, but the social costs yeah. of enforcing Prohibition were mammoth. There was simply no comparison between the two. Why not apply that same principle to marijuana, which is not an abusive drug to anywhere near the same degree, and which, if somebody has a criminal charge for it, can probably turn them into a criminal? Yeah. Reverend Alexander Sharp, we appreciate you being on the show. Your website is thecommongood.org, is that correct? That is correct. Hey, thanks for being on Gerard McClendon Live, my friend. Glad to be here. All right. Don't puff, puff, pass during my show. Lots of activity today on cltv.com slash gml. You can also hit me on Facebook and MySpace at Gerard McClendon and on Twitter at Gerard M. C. like people are split on Chicago, Tribune.com and CLTV.com. Former mayor of Baltimore, Kurt Schmoke, he would be proud. Sometimes decriminalizing just makes sense. Alcohol and cigarettes have age restrictions for purchase, but you can't get recreational marijuana at a convenience store, or can you? <laughs> wow, we're talking chronic Kush buds and blunts all welcome no jail time just a two hundred dollar fine if they're under 10 grams six three zero five seven five talk is the number i'm going straight to phones i'm going to latanya first latanya thank you for calling gerard mcclendon live what's your comment latanya hi um i just want to comment about you know the uh go ahead please talk about i'm sorry um about the um drug uh um, use and stuff. Um, I do think that there should be a limit on exactly how much marijuana you have on you mm -hmm. because I truly believe, like you said, um, when it comes down to uh, marijuana and um, 
drinking and tobacco, that's two different situations because marijuana doesn't cause any bodily harm to you. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't cause car crashes. It's not causing you to have lung cancer or breast cancer. So what's wrong with marijuana being legal? Mm, mm. So it's a con but it is a controlled substance, all right? And it's a, it's a mind-altering drug. So are you saying that cocaine should be legal? No, because I think that should be illegal. That's something that's going to cause you to do some bodily harm to yourself. Mm. You tell me, I have never known anyone to use marijuana that have, that have done or will do any, body type, any type of bodily harm to themselves. And you know what, Latanya? People drown in pools. People fall off balconies. So let's... Off of so, mar yeah, and, oh, come on. Come, come on now. You know, it for was the most... marijuana in their system and what else? Come. It just wasn't marijuana. You know it what? just was not only marijuana in their system. There's nothing that shows that there's marijuana in a person's system hey, Latanya, that will cause them to act Latanya, like nothing. Do you, Latanya, do you smoke weed? No, I do not. Okay, so how do you have so much knowledge of this? Because I have friends that did it, and I had did oh. it previously in my earlier time, but no, I choose to stop on my own. <laughs> However the case may be, it never caused me, it never gave me any kind of mindset to say, All oh, right. I'm, I feel like going to kill Johnny and... and hey, Latonya, <laughs> Latonya, hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate you. You know what? We always seem to have a friend who smokes, but we don't. Hey, let me go to Tim next. Tim, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment Tim Tim what's your yeah. comment Tim what's your comment I'm going to Steve next Steve thanks for calling GML what's your comment yes Rod I think that lady Latanya she needs to wait till she tries something before she speaks because she's <laughs> completely wrong but real, real quick Gerard what I'm thinking about is the commissioner now she didn't say anything where was she all alone but then soon when her relatives get stopped and get busted with this stuff <laughs> now she want to legalize something yeah and but you that's know another, and, and and she also played the race card too, man. Yes, she did. You know, don't get me wrong, okay? Maybe the offenses are a little bit higher for brothers and sisters out there. But, you know, at the same time, we shouldn't be riding dirty. That's right. And one other thing, I don't think it should be legal because you said it early, Kush, Blunts, and all that. They got some stuff. Now, I see, I'm 60 years old. So back in the 60s, it was a different little thing. Yeah. But this stuff now, they are very potent. Now, I'm not <laughs> going to say legalize it, but we know the court system, the lawyers, the judges, the probation officer, everybody get money this way with the little thing. So what they need to do, stop that. Don't feel like jail is full of that. Ticket them, let them pay their money. But I know in the world, I'm going to say, Legalized. Thanks for the call. I appreciate you. Let me get to one more call. Javon, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment? Let me talk to Marquita. Marquita, what's your comment? Hey, I wanted to say that they should have been legalized this. Mm. I don't know what they wasting all their time for, brother, the police, you know what I'm saying, running around picking up all these misdemeanors when they could be doing something else with their time. So, Marquita, so Marquita, do you think that if you have 10 grams or less, the $200 fine is okay? No, I don't know what they what they trying to get out two hundred dollars for. So, so, uh, so, so, Marquita, would you rather would you rather be fined two hundred dollars or go to jail? Oh no, nah, go on find me with the two hundred. Then go on find me with the two hundred. There we go. Hey, Marquita, thanks for the call. You know what? I don't care what anybody says tonight. I just had five or six phone calls. I had two drop calls. People probably were smoking weed while watching my show. Thanks for the call. Mayor Daly says we have to get the guns off the streets, but can't decide if a two hundred dollar fine on marijuana makes sense. He says it's cloudy. President Strozier says that he's not a fan of decriminalizing the drug that people start before they move on to the higher stuff. Alcohol can be recreational, social, or it can ruin your life through DUI or collision. Cigarettes can cause lung cancer, yet alcohol and cigarettes are very, very legal. The government is all about advantage, and if a marijuana possession can collect $200, the legislators will find ways to vacuum the revenue. I don't plan to smoke a doobie after the show, but if you do, be careful. Don't get caught. Gerard McClendon Live. Good night.